Today we're going to be talking about the things that you need to do and think about before you go running off to the Secretary of State's office to go ahead and file your LLC. Ready? Let's do this. Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jim and if you're new here, I am an online business lawyer and a YouTube entrepreneur. And on this channel, we give you the legal and practical tips that you need to start, build, grow, and yes, legally protect your online business so that you can achieve true wealth as well as freedom of time freedom of location and financial freedom as well. And today we're going to be talking about the various considerations that you need to be thinking about before you go ahead and file your LLC. And I know all of you are out there and you're like, no, I just want to go. I just want to get this paperwork done and I want to get it filed and completed as soon as possible. As entrepreneurs, that's the way we normally think. However, when it comes to the legal aspects of protecting your business, this isn't always the best way to go about it because if you make a mistake, it can actually cost you a lot more time and money to fix that mistake later on. So you want to make sure that you get this right from the very beginning. And in a world where every single state in the United States has a different set of rules and procedures for how to set up your LLC, it can be confusing and things aren't always intuitive or easy and you might be worried that you're going to mess something up. So today I want to share with you six things that you should be thinking about before you run to the Secretary of State's office. And by run, I really mean like type on your computer because almost all of them are online to go ahead and set up your LLC. So the very first consideration is decide, do you actually want to start a business? Is what you're doing with your online endeavors, is this a hobby? Is this something that you're just doing in your spare time for fun? Is this something that you're even, are you even earning money with this? If the answer to any of those questions is that, you know, this is not a legitimate business, it's just a hobby, it's just something you enjoy doing on the side, then chances are you probably don't need an LLC. But if this is a legitimate business, and if this is something that you plan to grow and invest a lot of time in, and if you're at a day job right now that you actually plan on leaving that day job at some point, point to work full time in your business, then yes, L setting up an LLC might be the right thing to do at this point. So assuming your answer to the first question is yes, you do want to build a legitimate business. The second thing you need to do is validate that business. I talk a lot about this in my courses and in my memberships. And what we're talking about here is basically going out to the market and making sure that people are actually going to pay you for your idea. Listen, I'm all about you know setting up your LLC and getting the legal protections in place, but I do have serious concerns that there are people out there that are setting up LLCs that don't have legitimate businesses or they have businesses that just, they haven't matured to the point where people are actually gonna pay them for anything. So I don't want you going out there and spending a lot of money on an LLC for a business that's basically gonna be upside down in just a couple months. So I want you to go out there and see if you can actually get at least one person to purchase something from you. If you can do that, if you can get somebody to buy something from you, then chances are you've got a pretty good idea and you need to go and set up your LLC. Now I've done another video that says, um, it's called LLC Not So Fast. I'll include a link to it right over here, I think. And uh, you can check out that video. It talks about why maybe you shouldn't set up an LLC right away. I will tell you, I posted that video a couple years ago and my thoughts about this have actually changed a little bit. And now I'm kind of of the mindset that you really wanna get that LLC set up as quickly as possible as soon as you decide that you actually do have a legitimate business so that people are actually gonna pay you for your products or services. And so, if if you watch that video and you think, oh, maybe I can hold off four or five months to set up your LLC, I don't really believe that anymore. I think that you need to get your LLC set up as soon as possible. So that's the second thing. Can you validate your business idea? Are people gonna pay you? If so, let's move on to the third consideration. And this one is actually pretty easy. This one is you need to pick a state. And I say that because I still to this day get a ton of comments on the channel, people wondering, where do they set up their LLC? I just got an email from somebody this morning says that people are telling him he needs to set up his LLC in Wyoming or Delaware. Maybe, but in all likelihood, probably not. So unless you're planning on being like the next Facebook or Twitter or something like that where you're gonna be getting a lot 
of money from outside investors and maybe it makes sense to file someplace other than your state, chances are for most of you that are watching these videos, you're a solopreneur or maybe you've got a partner, uh, one or two partners, or maybe you're in business with your spouse and you probably don't need to file someplace other than your own state. I would say in almost every situation, filing in your home state is the right choice. It's very, very rare that you would find the need to file someplace other than your home state. And I realize that there's a lot of these, um, it's very trendy right now to say, oh, go file in Wyoming because of privacy or file in New Mexico because you can do anonymous LLCs or file in Delaware because that's the laws are more favorable to your business. That is all bullshit. And frankly, it's just a way to get you to go and file in those states and use registered agent services in those states where you don't live. And frankly, if you're still living and working in this in some other state that's not one of those states, then you need to file as a foreign entity in your home state as well, which makes no sense because now you're paying LLC fees in two separate states. You're paying for registered agents in two separate states. You're paying for business addresses in two separate states. You really don't need to do that. So just file in your own home state. That's the easiest way to do it. And yeah, that, that, that's so pick a state, but the state's probably going to be where you already live. All right. Number four is one that people, a lot of people really overthink and they uh, really stress about this for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that is picking a name for your LLC. It really doesn't matter what name you pick for your LLC as long as the name is available in the state where you're going to be filing your LLC. Um, it doesn't need to. There, there, now, I will say each state has its own specific rules about certain things that you can and can't put in the name. And so I would go to the secretary of state's office for the state where you live to make sure that that state doesn't have any quirky rules about what you can actually name your LLC. Some states actually do have some quirky rules, so you do want to check that. But absent some sort of weird, strange rule or regulation that says that you can't name your LLC a certain thing because it's a prohibited word, assuming that the name that you want is actually available, then you can pretty much use whatever name you want. Some, some common names that I see are any name that would have your own personal name in it. So a lot of people just register their name as the LLC. You know, other people, they will use maybe their initials or their children's initials or some other combination of initials and letters in their name. Uh, for real estate, a lot of people will use you know, maybe the road that the real estate is on or in a series of numbers or letters. So it honestly doesn't matter. You just need to come up with something that uh, is unique and is, is not otherwise taken in your state. Don't overthink this. If I, I will say this, if you're thinking, well, I'm worried about a trademark or something like that later on down the road, that's fine. And but you can file a DBA for that trademark with the LLC's name uh, later on. And a lot of people have a number of different brands that they might sell under a single LLC. And so for the LLC itself, just come up with something that, that works for you and then you can name your business and deviate from that later on. Like I'll give you a good example. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we filed a new LLC for Heart Digital Media LLC, which is my media company that now owns the YouTube channel and all the revenue from the YouTube channel, as well as OB Foundations, which is my courses and membership program and also One Stop Legal, which is my DIY legal template store. And so that's separate from my law firm that owns the law firm and all the legal work we do for legal clients. And so, uh, so you'll notice Heart Digital Media owns all those things, but Heart Digital Media is not actually the name of any of those businesses. Pick a name, but don't overthink it. I think I need a quick coffee break today. I got Grandfather Mountain. Ah, oh, it's a little cold. What are you gonna do? All right. Feeling good now. All right, number five is you need to come up with a business address. Now, a lot of people are just gonna use their home address. That's perfectly fine, you can do that. But I do want you to be aware, for privacy reasons, you might not want your home address plastered all over the internet and through the Secretary of State's office where it's gonna become public record. So a lot of people decide to use some sort of virtual address. You can use a post office box if you'd like. Don't necessarily recommend that. Um, or you can use a virtual address. I will tell you a service that I recently signed up with. Now, backdrop here, I am moving to Portugal in July, and so I sublet my, my physical office space to 
another group. And so I had to get another address and I can't use our home address because we're moving to Portugal and selling the house. So I had to come up with something else. And I have had a relationship with the people at Earth Class Mail for quite some time. And I signed up for one of their business packages. It's about 80 bucks a month. And what they're gonna do for you is any mail that you receive, they will scan and upload to their system and they'll hold on to that mail for 30 days and they can forward it to you, they can forward it to somebody else, they can uh, accept DHL and uh, UPS packages and FedEx in certain locations, it depends which address you choose from them. And it's a pretty cool service because now instead of worrying about my physical mail coming to me and me going up to pick it up somewhere else or having it forwarded, it just goes directly to the address that I've signed up with for them and they scan everything in. Uh, there's a lot of privacy involved. Um, they take that very seriously. Everything's under lock and key. Uh, they'll even deposit checks for you. So if somebody were to send you a check and you need to have that deposited, they will take care of that for you as well. And it's very affordable. Like I said, 80 bucks a month. And um, if I get things from my clients that I need to send to clients, I can have them forward it directly to the clients. If I, if I need that, I can have it forwarded to me in Portugal when we live in Portugal. So it's pretty cool service and it allows me to have an address that's completely private from my separate home address. And so I highly recommend you look into them. Again, it's Earth Class Mail. I'll include a link down below. That uh, is an affiliate link if you decide to sign up. I get a small commission, uh, but it's a pretty cool service and something that I would recommend you look into if you're looking for a virtual address. The last thing that you need to do, and, and then I have a bonus. Before I get to this last one, I do have a bonus tip for you. I'm gonna talk to you about that here in just a second. But the last, um, the last one that's going to be more relevant to a lot of people is you need to pick a registered agent. Now, a lot of people say, why do I need to spend the money on this registered agent, Jim? Why can't I just use myself and my home address? Again, there's going to be privacy concerns. Also, a registered agent needs to be available uh, during normal business hours, Monday through Friday. And so if you decide to take a trip or go to the grocery store or go live abroad or something else, you need to have an address in the state where your LLC is formed for somebody to accept service of uh, official mail for you. And this might not be a lawsuit. It could be uh, subpoenas if you have employees. It could be tax notices. It could be annual report filing notices from the state. It could be all sorts of official mail that you wanna make sure that you're gonna receive. And some of it comes via certified mail. So you need to make sure somebody's gonna sign for it. If, uh, if for whatever reason, you are in violation of this. If you put your own name down as the registered agent and then you're not there to receive that mail, then you can run into all sorts of problems. You could have default judgments entered against you. You could miss tax notices that cost you a lot of money. There's a lot of bad things that can happen. So you wanna make sure that you use a corporate registered agent. Now this typically is gonna cost you between 100 to $200 a year to use a corporate registered agent. The, the registered agent that I use for both my law firm as well as for Heart Digital Media, my LLC, is Legal Inc. I'm gonna include a link down below. You can sign up through my link there. And um, it's, I mean, it's dead simple. It costs you 100, 130 bucks or something a year uh, to sign up through that. I'm not sure what the exact fee is for that, but it's not expensive. And then you have peace of mind knowing that you don't have to worry that you're gonna miss some sort of official piece of mail that would come to your house when you're not home. Also, you don't need to have your uh, mailing address or your home address out there for the whole world to see. Now, as I mentioned before, I have a bonus tip, but before I get to that bonus tip, I wanna let you know that if you're watching this video as of May 2022, I'm gonna be hosting a live three-day workshop during the first week of June. And this workshop, we're gonna cover everything you need to know to get your LLC set up the right way. I'm gonna walk people through step-by-step step everything they need to do. So the goal of this workshop is to number one, help you set up your LLC the right way and then talk to you about all the things that you need to do and give you all the tools that you need to make sure your LLC is legally protected after you've set up your LLC. And then also give you a good foundation as well as a checklist of things that you might need to do once you've got your LLC set up and all the post LLC setup tools 
are in place. So if you're interested in learning more about that, again, I'll include a link down below. And if you're watching this video and it's already like the end of June or July and you missed it, click the link anyway, because I'm going to redirect you to a waiting list. And I plan on doing this workshop again in the future. So check that out. All right, now onto the bonus tip. And the bonus tip is this, if you are forming an LLC with a partner or multiple partners, then one of the things that you need to do before you set up the LLC is that you need to negotiate and draft and sign an operating agreement. And this is going to be a multi-member operating agreement. And this is not something that I sell at my contract store. This is not something that I offer as a free download. I typically recommend that people go to a lawyer in your state to help you draft that document. I practice in North Carolina and Florida, so if you need one in North Carolina or Florida, I'm happy to help you with that. But this is something that I don't think you should handle on your own. There's too many issues that get missed when you're drafting this document on your own. I do recommend you pay a lawyer two, three thousand dollars whatever it might cost to make sure this gets drafted up the right way. And if you have two or, or three of you that are going into business together, then you can split that cost between the three of you and it's much more affordable. So I, I do recommend you get a multi-member LLC operating agreement drafted if you have partners for your business. All right, if you like this video and you'd like to learn more about the legal things that you need to do to set up your business, including filing LLCs, trademarks, all those things. I've set, put together a short playlist right here that's gonna talk to you about all the things that you need to do to legally protect your online business. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Cow.